Okay, so, so one other thing you asked me is you said, you said, okay, uh, Dr. McDougall, I know what the problem is. The problem is arsenic in my rice. And Dr. McDougal, you're recommending people eat rice, and obviously I shouldn't be eating rice because it's loaded with arsenic. And uh, everybody knows this because Consumers Report did a big article in November of 2012 and told you that your rice is loaded with arsenic. I refuse to answer you. But finally, you kept asking, and I had to answer you, and so I did answer you in, uh, well, in, in a newsletter that I published just recently. What uh, the Consumer Report says is it says this. It says rice contributes to 70% of exposure to inorganic arsenic. But they go on to say, which would put it in third place behind fruits, fruit juices at 18% and vegetables at 24%. Still, all you've heard is don't eat rice. And that's all your friends have told you. Don't eat rice because it's loaded with arsenic. And you say, Okay, McDougal, weigh in. Okay. Then Nature came out with their point of view, and they had an article called Contamination, the Toxic Side Effect of Rice. I mean, you've got Consumers Report. You've got uh, Nature, two of the most respected uh, publications on the market, telling you that you should avoid eating rice. Now, if you read this Nature article, what they say is they say this. They say... The situation is especially dire in Bangladesh, where rice is the national staple. And the water is naturally high in arsenic. But that's not what the report tried to tell you. They tried to tell you that rice is a huge threat to your health. Excuse me, the problem is the water in Bangladesh. It's loaded with arsenic. The research is clear, but who cares? You can sell magazines if you tell people not to eat rice. That's what I think. And your wells in some of the places you live are highly contaminated with various types of uh, toxins, including arsenic. So check your drinking water. The problem is not the rice. Now, if you read the Consumer's Report article, they'll tell you, okay, there are some wise things that you can do as a consumer. Now, one of the things you want to do is you want to buy California-produced rice. Now, you say, what's so special about California-produced rice? What's special about California produced rice as opposed to rice grown in the southeast United States is that rice grown in California is not grown on soils that are highly polluted with arsenic. Whereas in the southeast United States, they used to grow cotton. It was the major crop. And the boll weevil was a primary threat to the cotton crops. And guess what they did to kill the boll weevils? They sprayed them with arsenic. And what do you think happened to that arsenic? It went into the soil. And so now when they grow rice in the southeast United States, guess what it's loaded with? There's nothing wrong with rice. What's wrong is our soils are contaminated with lead and arsenic and cadmium and all kinds of garbage. Why pick on rice? Okay, so you ask me, okay, what should I do about rice? Because all my friends and neighbors say, don't eat that McDougal diet because they ask you to eat rice. All right, fine. Let's just give them, let's just give them the rice thing. What the McDougal diet is a starch-based diet with fruits and vegetables that minimizes your intake of oils, vegetable oils, like olive, corn, safflower oil, and animal foods like meat, dairy, eggs, et cetera. That's the McDougal diet. All right, so you're, you're sitting there thinking to yourself, all right, now this McDougal, he's okay sometimes, but I know he makes mistakes. 
So maybe he's got it wrong about this rice thing. Okay, so maybe I got it wrong. Pick another starch to center your diet around. Pick potatoes. Potatoes are the worldwide pillar of nutrition. Excuse me, whether or not populations and civilizations survived or perished depended upon the potato. You want to read about potatoes? I have three books about potatoes at home. It's an ideal food. So starch paste your diet around potatoes or sweet potatoes or corn, like the Mayas and Aztecs used to, or pasta, like they did in the Mediterranean part of the world. So don't eat rice. I don't really care. But starch based your diet, in other words, most of your calories, just like my old plantation patients, those first generation Filipinos, Japanese, Chinese, and Koreans, they ate 90% of their food as rice, and they thrived. You don't want to eat rice? Fine. Eat potatoes. Now, the other recommendation they have is uh, don't eat brown rice. Excuse me, I spent the last 40 years being told that I need to eat whole grains. And now they're saying the arsenic is primarily concentrated in the brand. So one way to solve the problem, in addition to buying California rice, is eat white rice. And you're thinking, wait a minute. This flies in the face of everything I have ever learned, but it's Consumer Reports and Nature Magazine. Who's to argue with the experts? And you don't know what to do, okay? <clears throat> One of the things they forgot to mention is 90% of the intake of arsenic in the, cons in the consuming population of the US and Europe comes from seafood. Yes, it does, but Somehow that didn't hit their radar screen. Now what they say is, that's not important because this is organic arsenic. Excuse me, organic arsenic is toxic too. And you say, okay. Now what they're telling me is don't eat rice. And I think probably rice, I like rice. And they didn't mention seafood. Okay, so let's see. What am I going to do? Well, uh, let's see what's happened to rice consumption worldwide. If I say rice, you say China, Vietnam, Cambodia, Japan, India. That's what you say. When I say rice, you say, let's see, I've been around for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. And what I remember in all my studies and all my travels is that people in the Far East, they eat mostly rice, and there are no fat people, and they don't have breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, and they're hardworking all day long. And those uh, Far East Asians, they almost won World War II, and they did beat us in the Vietnam conflict, Let's see, am I missing something? Well, that was the Asian before 1980. What has happened in China, Japan, Vietnam, Cambodia, is they have become rich. Excuse me, they have as al almost as many Tesla supercharging stations in China as they do in the US. They have become rich in China, Cambodia, Vietnam, Japan, et cetera, even India. And what have they done with this wealth? Well, they've changed what they eat. Yes, they have. And so they've stopped eating so much rice. If you look at the worldwide consumption of rice, it is down all over the Far East. Yes, it is. But what's up? These are just the facts, ladies and gentlemen. What's up is the consumption of animal foods, meat and dairy, all over the world. I was in India six months ago. I told the three hospitals that I talked to that uh, China was the fattest, sickest nation in the world. And the Indian people stood up and said, you 
you're wrong. We are. We're the fattest, sickest people in the world. Yes, we are. That's what they told me. How could I argue? The consumption of meat and dairy has almost doubled in the last 30 years. Yes, it has. And so has the consumption of vegetable oil. So they eat less rice, more meat, more dairy, more oil. In India, Japan, China, Vietnam, every other place that you can look, want to travel, or watch a TV documentary on, they eat less rice and more meat and more dairy. And they drive more Teslas. Okay? And before 1980, I've been around a long time. I'm almost 68 years old. I'm a grandfather. I have six grandkids, one on the way. I've been at this for 46 years. And some of you have been long enough, around long enough to make the same observations that I have. Prior to 1980, there were no fat people in Vietnam, Cambodia, China, or Japan. No, there weren't. You could stand in a town square with 100,000 fellow citizens and you wouldn't see a single fat person. But back before 1980, 90% of their food came from rice. There was virtually no type 2 diabetes. There was no multiple sclerosis. Post-World War II Japan, they described 76 cases of prostate cancer. Before 1980, when 90% of their diet was rice, sure, they had sanitation problems. They had problems of getting enough food. They had immunization problems. But before 1980, they had no bypass surgeons. Oncology was a bad business to be in. Since 1980, what's happened is people in the Far East have become wealthy. Now, what have they done with that wealth? As people would naturally do. They have uh, improved their diet so to speak. And what has happened since 1980 when fewer than 1% of the population had type 2 diabetes and there was virtually no obesity in the Far East, what has happened is they have enthusiastically taken on the rich Western diet. And the consequences are today in China, half the people are pre-diabetic. At least that's what the Journal of the Medic Medical Association says. 12% of the population in China has type 2 diabetes. Now, maybe it's more in India. Who's here to argue? This is not a mystery as to why people are sick. The reason they're sick, and uh, you can see it every place you look, is because of food poisoning. They have switched from a starch-based diet, which 9.5 billion of the 10 billion people who've walked this planet have consumed. I'm not saying they're vegan. I'm just saying, wherever you look, be it the Aztecs or the Mayans, who are known as the people of the corn, the people of the Andes, who are potato eaters. The Incas lived on potatoes until they went to battle. And because potatoes were so hard to carry, they switched to quinoa. Or if you look at the people in the Far East who lived on rice, nine and a half billion of the 10 billion people who walked this planet consumed most of their calories from starch. Not kale, not broccoli, not cauliflower, like the modern vegan is doing not from fake soy burgers, 
not for 90% fat, soy, cheese. 90% of their calories throughout all of human history have come from starch. <clears throat> we are starch eaters. Some of you know who, what I, you know, yeah. Okay, so what happened is we took a, we took a, a population of planet Earth where just a few people were wealthy and because of uh, fossil fuels, in the Industrial Revolution, we were able to change the, the number of kings and queens from a few, they used to be known as pharaohs and priests and priestesses in Egypt, you know, the ones that were buried in the, in the uh, pyramids, you know, the Valley of the Kings. They took these few people who were eating the Western diet who died of atherosclerosis, diabetes, obesity, gallbladder disease, etc. They took their just a few people, like a few kings and queens of uh, three, four hundred years ago, you know, King Henry VIII, et cetera, a few people who could eat really rich food because of the Industrial Revolution and because of, uh, of uh, tapping into fossil fuels, we've made it so that even the poorest people on the planet can eat at Burger King, Dairy Queen, can fill their plates with imperial margarine, and eat as much rich food as they can stuff in their faces, and that's why they're sick. Okay, so anyway. <clears throat> Rice is not the problem. Certainly you don't want to eat dirty food. You don't want your crops growing in soils contaminated with lead, arsenic, mercury, cadmium, etc. You want clean food. But there's no reason to take and declare this all-out war on rice. It's not the problem. Okay, so anyway. 